So, all right, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to continue uh, with searching and sorting. In fact, we're going to continue today and Thursday with searching and sorting. And I thought I would do uh, a little bit of a recap on what we've covered so far, uh, because what we were what we were looking at, at least in C and in Java. Uh, was uh, the built-in sorting and searching algorithms. Uh, so, uh, let, but we only did it with integers. So the way that I want to do this recap is to introduce uh, how to do this with structures, which you'll probably want to do most of all, especially in your lab tomorrow. Uh, so first of all, as a review, as a recap, let's go ahead and define a structure for bank accounts. Uh, what I want to do is I want to support uh, a uh, like an, uh, an account number, uh, the owners, the first name, last name, and of course the balance, because that's the most important thing, right? So type def, oops, type def struct, right? That's how I begin. Uh, I, let's make, make sure that everything, yep. Uh, I'll have uh, an, say, uh, I'll, just for variety here, I'll make sure that it's an integer for the account number, okay? Uh, remember that at the end of your structure, you have semicolons, not commas, commas come from enumerated types. Right? Uh, these are de variable declarations, so we use semicolons. And let's go ahead and go with the owner's first name, so char, star, first name, right? char, star, last name. Implicitly, that's the owner of the account, okay? Of course, you could, have, um, you could name this owner first name, owner last name, or even better yet, you could define yet another structure to define a person, right? and then use composition so that a bank account is composed of a person and these other things. Uh, and then finally, a, a double for my balance, right? Okay. Uh, by the way, a side note here, in general, in practice, you don't want to use floating point numbers to indicate uh, uh, currency values. Uh, you generally want to use uh, whole numbers because then you're susceptible to round off errors and floating point errors and stuff like that. Uh, but for this demonstration, this is perfectly fine, okay? Uh, now, over here in account.c, I've already anticipated, uh, uh, we'll go ahead and update these. Uh, I've, uh, I've already anticipated that we're going to create bank accounts, and so that's what I want to call this. And I've created a print account. So given an array of, count, uh, of accounts and its size, we'll go ahead and print out each one of them in a nicely formatted manner. Uh, so the account number, uh, first name, and last name, and then balance. First uh, oh, we'll go last name, first name. Right. There. Uh, where am I? There we go. CCC, C, account, dot C. So I've created my, uh, I've successfully created my model, right? My model for, for a bank account. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to, uh, over here in demo, I already uh, anticipated that I would make it like that. So I've created five bank accounts here. And let's go ahead and print them out now. Print accounts, oops, uh, accounts. Uh, and we'll go ahead and print out these accounts. Uh, and there are five of them. And I'll go ahead and compile all these things together in one convenient uh, call to GCC demo.c. Oops. Did I not include it up here? Print accounts, what was it called? Print account, oh, I, I suppose I need that in the header file, sorry. I need the prototype in the header file, otherwise it doesn't know what you're talking about. Uh, that was just a warning anyway. Let's go ahead and run it. And you see that it's going to print out in exactly the same order as before, okay? Now, we're not gonna write our own sorting algorithms. I don't wanna do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use what's built into the language for us. Uh, and here is a review of what we need. Uh, just a second, bear with me here. Uh, searching and sorting. I wanna open up this comparator. Right. So here's the idea. We've got an input array, right? And what is that array? Is it an array of integers? Is it an array of doubles? Is it an array of bank accounts? Who cares? I want one sorting algorithm to sort any type. I want one sorting algorithm to rule them all, right? And, and the, out, uh, the output will be the sorted array. The problem is this generic sorting algorithm doesn't know what it's sorting. It doesn't know that these are integers in order to use the greater than or less than or equals equals uh, operator. It doesn't know that it's a bank account in order to look at the last name and then the first name if they've got the same last name. It doesn't know anything about them. It just knows how to sort. So given these two elements, oh, they're out of order, I need to swap them in order to, sw uh, to continue sorting. 
quick sort or selection sort or merge sort, whatever sorting algorithm implementation you have. Uh, but it doesn't know, uh, it knows how to sort things, but it just doesn't know how to order things. Given these two elements, do they go like this? Or they're out of order, so I need to swap them. Or they're equal, so I leave them alone. That's where the comparator comes in. Given these two things, A and B, it hands them off to the comparator. The comparator does know what they are. The comparator knows that they're integers, or the comparator knows that they are uh, bank accounts. And so it knows to make the proper adjustments to say, okay, they're bank accounts, and I'm a comparator for the last name, first name, so we'll go ahead and order it like this. The way that it communicates back to the sorting algorithm is through the return, time, or the return value. It returns something negative if they're in order, it returns something positive if they're out of order, or it returns zero if they're equal, conceptually equal. That's all we need. Once we've got that, then we can use quicksort. Quicksort takes a generic array. It's not an array of integers. It's not an array of doubles. It's not an array of bank accounts. It's an array of, I don't know, void. That's where the void star comes in. Right? Uh, the number of elements in the array, the size of the array, and a comparator to actually compare them. Okay? The compare is a function pointer that that's what we're going to look at here uh, in a second after we do this recap. So let's go ahead and get some more practice here. And let's create a comparator. Int CMP. We'll, we'll compare bank accounts, accounts by how. How do you want? Uh, so we've got a lot of, of choices here, right? We could order it by the account number in ascending or descending order. We could order it by first name or last name or last name, then first name breaking ties that way. Uh, or we could order it in balance. Again, all these things have the opposite as well. Uh, uh, ascending or descending. So, votes, which one do we want to do? Uh, that would just be an integer, so we could use our old comparators that we used last time that we developed for an integer. Uh, right? uh, let's do last name first. Okay, let's do last name by name. All right? And then, of course, I would put that in documentation to do that it may, breaks tie, it looks at the first, the last name first, and then if it's the same, then it goes to the first name. So does it take two bank accounts? Bank account, bank account A and bank account B. Is that a comparator? Nope. Something is only a comparator if, oops, if it follows this signature. It doesn't take two bank accounts. It doesn't take two integers. Remember, quicksort doesn't know what these things are. The comparator knows what they are, but to be a generic comparator, it has to have this signature. Right? So we'll go ahead and go back here and make the appropriate adjustment. There we go. OK. Now we actually have to implement this comparator. So step one. Force the generic void pointers to become the type that you expect. In this case, we do expect bank accounts. So I will have a const bank account. Why const again? I'm not going to make changes to it. I'm just going to look at it and say they go like this or this or this, right? Uh, bank account star x is equal to, and I'll type cast a. I'll do the same for B. And so now I have X and Y. Right. You could dereference them if you really wanted to uh, and then start using the dot operator. But I'm going to go ahead and keep these as pointers so that I can use the arrow, uh, the arrow operator. Okay. Now I, have, uh, now I uh, apply my logic here. So I'm going to look at the last name. Is there something already that will allow me to compare this last name to that last name? which are strings, str, cmp, right? x's last name to y's last name. Right. Do I have the string library? Yep, I've got the string library. I anticipated it. Why did I not immediately return that result? Remember, string comparator, cmp, returns something negative, positive, or zero already. So I'm good to go. Only something, well, it's only something, but that's good enough, right? 
I'm not gonna read anything into the magnitude. I don't care if it's positive 42 and negative 101, right? I just care that it's negative, positive, or zero. But only going to the last name means that my two Smiths here, Joe Smith and Zelda Smith, they're effectively equal. What if I wanted Joe before Zelda? Then I need to, based on a tie, in which case the result is what? Zero. If it's a tie, then I go and compare the first name. There we go. Say, oh, say, thank you. Otherwise, that would have already always been zero, right? It's okay, though, because what if we have two Joe Smiths or two Zelda Smiths or three or four, 50 Zelda Smiths? They're all the same, right? Uh, now, in general, uh, we'll, 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 this is something we'll talk about next time, but in general, you do want it to be a, what's called a total order. In other words, if all things are being equal, you should still find some sort of unique identifier in order to, uh, to break ties. Uh, in this case, maybe the account number, because the account number is uh, guaranteed to be unique. Or if it was a person, maybe their social security number or their NUID, in which case you're hoping that it's unique, right? Okay, there's my comparator. I don't have to specify how to sort this stuff now. All I need to do is call QSort. And I'll print it out again. QSort is going to assort the accounts. Remember, here's, the, here's QSort. There's the array that you pass into it, the number of elements in the array, the size that each element takes. So how, if this were an integer, it'd be size of int. If it were a double, it'd be size of double. This is not an integer. These are not integers. These are bank accounts. So I should do size of bank account. And then finally, how do you want to order these things? Here's where the comparator comes in. Right? The comparator comes in, and all you need to do is provide the name of the function. That's how it gets passed. Yeah? Uh, it doesn't have to. It, it, it's a function that returns an integer and takes two const void star pointers. So how does this work? This is, this is called what's called a function pointer, and we're going to talk about this here in a moment uh, after we make sure that, of course, this works. All right, there we go. So Burke, Hopper, Smith, Smith, Turing. Right. Agreed that it's in order? All right. Well, the, the, that, that's what I was expecting, right? Because A through Z, if you wanted it in the reverse order, what would you do? Reverse X and Y. In fact, I could just do it right here. I could say... B and A instead. And now it'll be Turing first, Alan, and then Smith, Smith, Hopper, Burke. I'll go ahead and restore that though. Okay, so again, how did we pass one function to another function so that that function could use it? Here's the, uh, here's the idea again, right? Here's the input. Actually, this comparator right here is also input. Once the, uh, once QSort, once the sorting algorithm has that in its hand, it can call that function, right? I'm telling the sorting algorithm, use that function over there or use that function over there or use that function over there. What am I doing? I'm pointing to a function. Where's fu where are functions stored? In memory, just like everything else. So by saying use that function over there, I'm saying the, the, over there in that memory location, is a comparator that you can use and you can start invoking. Right? How does this actually work? Right? So, uh, say what? I am using a pointer. It's a function pointer. Here we go. Right? So, how can we pass, oops, pass a function to another function as a parameter? so that that function can use or call the past function. Right? Basically, I want to specify, use that function over there, use that function over there. Doing so is generally referred to as using a call.
callback. Uh, or uh, the the function the past function is the callback, and the function that uses it calls it back. <laughs> That's the best that I could ever come up with. I've never found a satisfying uh, reason why. Why is it called a callback? Well, I guess it calls it back, right? <laughs> Here's an example: GUI programming, which is graphical user interface programming. You know, uh, in fact, just before we were talking about game programming. Uh, so here's a button, uh, and when I, uh, if, if, I, if I'm gonna program a graphical user interface, I have to have a way to create a button. It's gonna be a green button with the words go on it. But what else do I need? I need an event. When, uh, I need to specify when somebody clicks that button, I want you to call that function over there. Right? And the way that I do that is by giving this function to that, uh, to that function that creates the button. Uh, when it, uh, that's called register, uh, registering, right? In graphical user interface programming, uh, to when, when a button is clicked, a function must be called to handle that event, right? And the way that you do that is by you register a callback call back one word to do this. Right? Or in game programming, uh, there's an event where these two balls come together and they collide. Uh, I want this ball to destroy that ball because this is the, that's, the, that's an enemy uh, and this is, the, this is my weapon or this is my fist or something like that and so I've destroyed this. Uh, there's an event that's handled by the game engine already that th these two objects have collided. What happens? Right? Well, by default, maybe physics just says, says, okay, they bounce off with equal momentum. Right? But what I want is, I want this object gets destroyed. How do I do that? I have to write, uh, write a piece of code that says, destroy that object. And then what do I do with it? Well, I have to register event what, that when these two things collide, call that function over there that destroys this object. Right? Uh, Event-based programming, basically, is, uh, is one use for callbacks. Another is, another example is QSort. Right. Uh, it needs a way to order elements. So you pass in a comparator as a function pointer. Right. And again, it's simply just QSort. Go ahead and call that function over there if you need to know that A and B are in order or out of order. Right. Uh, so how does this work? A function is simply code that's stored in memory somewhere, right? So in other words, i.e., the function is, function is stored at some memory address, which can be pointed to by a function pointer, right? Uh, this particular, uh, uh, your functions generally are stored in the stack when the, the program loads up. There's a, uh, it's stored in the stack, and so you can refer to your stack space. Right? Uh, and you can create a, a, a pointer that points to it. Uh, this is, again, known as a fun a function pointers. So let's actually look at how to do this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this knowledge to go back all the way to the beginning and redo our linear search algorithm. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, f a function pointer that can point to a function. that returns an integer and takes three parameters. Say an int, char, and double, okay? Of course, there's no function like this that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm just showing you syntactically how does this work, all right? So int, that's the return value. Now, if I just did this, ptr2 func, right? That's the, that's the name, uh, the, uh, ptr2 func, that's the name of my pointer. Just like if I had integer array, the name of the pointer is ARR, right? If I just did this, what kind of, what kind of pointer is this? It's a pointer to an integer. So I want this to be a pointer to a function. So I need to use some parentheses here to disambiguate it. It's no longer a pointer to an integer. It is a pointer to a function that returns an integer and also takes an integer a character and a double. Right. That's similar to int 
A, right? I've just declared the pointer. At, on this line, on line 12, what is A pointing to? Big question mark, it could be pointing to anything. So likewise, on line 11, what is that pointer pointing to? It could be anything, right? I don't know. So let's make it point to something. No, okay, let's make it point to null. PTR2 func is equal to null. Right. Now what happens do you think if I try to dereference that null pointer? Segmentation fault. Likewise, if I tried to call the function at the null pointer location, there is no function there. So segmentation fault. Okay. So that's the basic syntax. Now let's actually make something useful, right? Because there's no function that I know of that takes those three things. So let's make a, create a function pointer that can point to the square root function. Remember the square root function returns a double and it takes one parameter, which is also a double. So double PTR to SQRT, or to, I'll, I'll, I'll call it math, right? Because we are going to make this generic. Uh, and, it and it takes a double. Okay. Now make it point to SQRT. How? PTR to math is equal to SQRT. I do not use parentheses. Parentheses means you mean to call that function and start running the code located at that memory location. The function's name, its identifier, is its uh, memory address, just like an, ar an array. Int star arr equals malloc, blah, blah, blah. Arr is the pointer name itself. Uh, so in this case, sqrt, that's also, uh, that, that is also a pointer. Once I've got that, I can actually call it. Right? So double y is equal to, here's the normal way of calling sqrt, right? Uh, what's the square root of two? Printf, percent f and the line. Uh, square root of two is blah, and then we'll print out y here. GCC demo pointer. Uh, oh, okay. There we go. 1.41, blah, blah, blah. Right? That's the normal way. Now that I've got a pointer to it, though, I can do it circuitously. I can do it through the pointer, call, uh, pointer value. All right, so let's go ahead and I don't, I don't want two y's there. Instead of calling the square root function, I'm going to call the pointer to math function, passing in two. All right? And math of two, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it like that, is, oops. There we go. Exactly the same. Why? Because PTR to math is pointing to square root. I don't have to stop there though, right? I could say change what it's pointing to. Give me another math function. All right. Now it's no longer a square root of two. It, what is the cosine of two? Does anybody know off the top of their head? Remember radians? Okay, I'll, I'll believe it, All right? Uh, I could make it point to something else entirely. Could I, could I make it point to, oops, could I make it point to pow though? The power function, remember man pow, what's, what, what is the power function? It takes two doubles and returns a double. Just like making a pointer uh, for an integer pointer point to a double, well you can do that, but it's not gonna work, right? Uh, it's not gonna work in this case either. In fact, uh, I don't know, let's find out what happens. Uh, I'm curious. Okay, yep, incompatible uh, type. It's just a warning. Let's find out what happens when we actually run it. Anything goes, not a number, right? Not a number probably because uh, it's not, you're not giving it enough input, and so you probably only gave it the first input. You don't have the exponent without, uh, with an undefined exponent, anything goes, right? So uh, that will definitely fail. What's the point? I can just call these things directly. Why do I need a pointer? I need a pointer because if I want to delegate opportunity, if I want to delegate uh, responsibility to another function, then I need to tell that function how, uh, I, need to, I need to actually delegate it, right? I need to tell it what to do. And what I mean by that is, let's go ahead and say run math. Right? Let's create a function that returns a double 
And, well, actually, well, let's just go ahead and make it void run math. Right? And it'll take an input, double x, and it'll also take a math function, any old generic math function, as a pointer. So that inside here, we'll go ahead and steal some of the code down here. Actually, I'll steal this code right here. And we'll call pointer to math on, not 2.0, but x. And we won't uh, say that it's square root because at this point, just looking at this code, do you know what this function is? I have no idea, right? Two of some function is there. So how, do, uh, how can I use this now down below? Simply just run math on your input and say square root or sine or can I do abs? Careful, abs is for integers, right? So I need to use fabs. Right? And just to make sure, I'll make it negative two so we can actually get something out of it. Oops, uh, well, okay, that's still the warning from up here, uh, but we can, we can still run it. There. Uh, oops, do I have costs up there? I said run math, right? Okay, fine. Let's get rid of this. Oh, oh, I had some errors. Y is undeclared. Duh. There. Okay, now it'll run because it wasn't compiling. That's why. Two of some function. What function was it? It was the square root function, right? Two of some function is. That, well, that was the cosine function, right? Because we passed in the, the, the sine function. Then two of some function is, uh, I think I hard-coded two up here. I shouldn't have done that, but you get the idea, right? So still, what's the point? I can delegate to that function, this function over here. Now, I forget if I signed it in your final assignment, but think about one use case of this, right? Now, you, I don't, don't, don't generally do this in the main section, but uh, with the honors section, most people are taking or have taken calculus. So what, what, what's one, one method of integration with calculus? Calculus two. Uh, sorry, you don't remember? <laughs> or? Uh, I, Numerical integration, right? So like, for example, here's x squared, right? I want to get the area under the line. So what can I do? I can split it up and use Riemann sums, right? There's one, one method. I could write a Riemann sum method for the cosine function. I could write a Riemann sum method for the sine fu uh, cosine function, then the sine function, then the square root function, then the x squared function. Right? I would be writing and rewriting these over and over and over again. Or I could write one Riemann sum method for every, fun every possible function. And then what I could do is I could pass that function in and say, Take the integral of cosine from A to B. Take the integral of sine from A to B. Take the integral of x squared from A to B. Right? It saves me from having to duplicate code over and over again. Right? Questions so far? Because, yeah, go ahead. Good question. Uh, if you dereference it, ugh. Uh, it'll just be a memory address, so. Bad things, I imagine. <laughs> uh, Dereference square root. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that's gonna ha what's gonna happen there. Okay. Uh, I don't know what this is. Right. Uh, what if we printed it out? Print f percent p. It's it's not a pointer anymore. It's just code. It. Well, I mean, it, it's it, uh, square root itself is just a memory address. So when you dereference it, you get the thing stored at that memory address. Um, you could force it to become an integer, right? Uh, by saying int star uh, a is equal to square root, and then dereference a circuitously here, uh, and then we can print it out as an integer. It'll just be whatever number is stored at that, uh, like whatever. That, that value interpreted as a four byte integer. 
Uh, it really has no, uh, no interpretation, I imagine. Uh, of course, you, ca uh, you can fill, start writing to that memory location. So here's the square root function. I don't care about the square root function anymore. I'm going to overwrite that memory location with my own code. I'm going to inject my own code at that memory location so that if anybody ever starts to, uh, uh, calls the square root function, then that means that they're gonna run my code, which say, steals passwords and sends them on to me, right? That's code injection, and that's how, uh, that, that's how it works. Of course, it's not good, you're not gonna be able to do that here. I can't, for example, uh, I can't make the square root function become the sine function. Uh, this will probably just be a warning. Oh, it's, now it's an error, right? Uh, it's an error because uh, this is a, uh, it's a built-in function. I, I can't even force it like this. Yeah. Uh, you'd have to create your own pointers. This, because it, 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 you're not gonna be able to change the function values outside, you're gonna have to do some metaprogramming to do that. So good question, when you dereference a function pointer, what do you get? It, it's pure code, whatever is stored there, right? Uh, you'd have to interpret it as, well, here's one byte, here's the next byte, here's the third byte, and then start doing byte level kind of manipulation where you, you change this byte to this exact byte and that byte to that exact byte, uh, and you're starting to rewrite that memory directly. Uh, if you've ever done a hex editor uh, or seen hex editing, like the old school games, uh, like the Nintendo, you know, Nintendo Entertainment System, it had something called the Game Genie. Uh, you probably might have heard of it before. No, the Game Genie was this third-party thing that you put uh, put in, and then you put the, your game on top of that, and it directly hex edited uh, the data back and forth, you know, to do cheats, uh, and so. Uh, that, that's how it was, it was done. It was re just rewriting memory locations so that you had 500 lives instead of one life. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, you, can, you, you can hack with uh, GDB, <laughs> uh, but uh, like, like hacker hacking, like the movie hacking, no, you, you'd have to learn that by, by reading, the, uh, reading stuff. <laughs> Like movie hacking, no, <laughs> that that doesn't even really exist anyway. Uh, uh, there was, a, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, though, there was a good um, uh, ask me anything on Reddit a few days ago on the founder of Anonymous uh, that was busted, uh, and uh, the the hacker group Anonymous, uh, and uh, it, you know you can or or old school hackers like Mitnick or whatever, uh, you, you can read their books and biographies and how they went about stuff. It's really not all that glamorous. I mean, the, the, the closest thing that, that, uh, in, uh, that you see in a movie to real life hacking was probably war games, right? War games where, how did he hack into the system? Hours and hours and hours of research <laughs> until he found you know, the, the, the guys, uh, that he had a son named Joshua. Oh, I wonder if Joshua is the password and that, that's how he found it. <laughs> So hours and hours and hours of research. <laughs> it's not that glorious. <laughs> all right, so how can we use this? Let's go all the way back to the beginning here. Remember we started out with linear search, right? This was a linear search for integers. Uh, well, if I wanted to do one for films, I had to do another one. If I wanted to do one for doubles, I had to do another one. So what I wanna do now is I wanna steal this code and I'd want to solve this problem once and for all. Let's create a linear uh, search function for any type. Not for doubles, not for integers, but for anything. Linear search period, okay? All right. So that means that we no longer take a, an array of doubles or integers or anything. We take a void array, okay? We still need to know how big it is. But we're also going to take a key that's not a double, it's a also a void star pointer. And we'll make it const as well because we're not making changes to the key, we're not making changes to the array, so we'll go ahead and keep that contract, okay? And we still need to know how big it is. Right? Nope, not yet. Uh, so now let's look at how we would have to modify this code. Since they're no longer doubles, I cannot use this equals equals here. What are they? How do I compare them? Right? 
I don't know anything about them. Now I'm quick sort. Now I'm Q sort. I don't know anything about these things. I need to know that they, now I need to know, do they go like this, like this, or are they equal? This is the needle in the haystack. This is the thing that I'm looking for. To do that, I need yet another component. That component is now the comparator. And so I will take an int cmp, which takes a const void star and const void star value. Right? You, could, you could give them names A and B if you wanted to, A and B, but it doesn't matter. Right? The name of that comparator is cmp. So now what I can do is I can hand these two things off to the comparator. If the, compar the comparator will return something negative, something positive, or zero, depending on the relative ordering, I'm interested in the case in which it returns zero because that's the thing that I found, that's the thing I was looking for. They're equal, so therefore, here's the key, here's the thing that I'm looking at. There, it says that they're equal. This is the thing that I was looking for. That was the needle in the haystack. Uh, now let's go ahead and bring this over to, oh, this is in the H file anyway. Sorry. Uh, copy and get rid of all this. There we go. And bring this over to the that file. Now, this is still not going to compile. Uh, linear search. Uh, oops, not linear search. What is it called? Account. C. There we go. This is still not going to compile because... We have an invalid use of the void expression here. Dereferencing a void pointer, right? The ith value. What's the problem here? Okay. So array, that's just a memory address. The ith one, I, the, you, we understand with the, the syntax here that I want the ith value. I want the first, oops, there we go. I want the first value, or I want the second value, or I want the third value, right? The only way that this works is because uh, it worked before is because of the compiler, right? Array is the memory address of the uh, beginning of the array, right? Array sub zero is the first element. Array sub one is the second element, et cetera, et cetera. But this only works because if the compiler if the compiler knows what these are, right? For example, if I have integers, then zero is the is zero bytes away from the beginning, right? If it's an integer, where is the second one? It is four bytes away from the beginning. Right? If it's the third, if it's again, if it's an integer, it is eight bytes away from the beginning for the first, second, and third element. Right? This up here is just convenient syntax to tell the compiler, figure it out. The compiler is able to say, oh, th these are integers. So I've got the first one right here. The next one is four bytes away. The next one is four bytes away. The next one is four bytes away. If these were doubles, what would it look like instead? The compiler now knows that if these are doubles, then the first one is zero bytes away. The second one is eight bytes away because uh, doubles are uh, eight bytes. And the third one is 16 bytes away, right? But it's, it's able to do that math and we're, uh, we don't have to do that math uh, uh, for ourselves because of this syntax. But now we've got these, this element. Do we know how many bytes each one takes? No, the compiler certain does, certainly doesn't. So that's yet another component that we need. Don't worry about size t, but you've seen it before. Size t, size of each element, right? That's the number of bytes that each element takes. And so size t, uh, I'll, I'll just say size here. I'll use the same one. Okay. Now we do know where everything is, right? Here's the void, uh, void slash, I don't know what they are anymore, but the first one, first, first is, first it, first, first is zero bytes away. Right? Where's the second? Is size bytes away. Where's the third? Two size bytes away. Right? 
So in general, the ith element is at, now I begin, we're away, I, I've been, kind of been ignoring the array here. Uh, the first element is at array plus, or the ith element is at array plus i times size bytes away. This is the math that the compiler is doing every single time I use this syntax up here. And it's able to do that because it knows size. But in here, we don't know what they are. They're just void. So we have to tell it. Yeah. Because you, where does it begin? It can't begin at zero because that's the null byte. Array, uh, uh, oops. Array is a memory address stored in memory. And so that's where the first element is. Then size bytes away, however many it is, say 50, right? And 50 instead of five. Uh, that's, the, 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 that's the second one. Then another 50, then another 50, right? I have to do this, it's called pointer arithmetic. It's just arithmetic. I'm adding, I'm multiplying, subtracting, doing whatever, right? And this is why I think, I, I don't remember if we uh, showed it to you, but you can do something like this. It's just pointer arithmetic. Uh, you're starting at a memory location and you're going back four bytes. That's not part of your array. You start screwing up your own memory, stack smasher kind of event or whatever, but you can do it. <laughs> uh, hopefully there will be a warning or something like that. So it's no longer this thing. What I need is a memory address of the ith element plus i times size. So that's a memory location which, is, uh, which it's expecting, right? Remember it's a const void star. Uh, the key is also a const void star, so we're good to go here. Does it know what type the into? It doesn't, oh, the, the comparator does. But why does the comparator know? Because when you write your comparator, you force it to become those things. If you have a comparator for integers, and then you try to order bank accounts, it's not going to work, right? That, but that's on you. All right, so I do need to update this uh, prototype here. There we go. And now it'll compile without issue. So compile everything together. Okay, I'm fine. Way too far back in the history. Account.c and demo.c. Okay, it compiles, but we're not done yet here. And then we actually have to use it, right? So let's go ahead and use, uh, I, what, what was our, what was our, uh, Comparator for, it counts by name. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to create a dummy bank account with the values you are searching for. In this case, I want a bank account by name, account uh, is equal, uh, key, I'll call it the key, a key, and I'll use the same syntax I used up here, right? Uh, and uh, I'm gonna be searching for, uh, for by name, so it doesn't matter what the bank account number is, uh, but it certainly it matters that I'm searching for my own bank account. And it doesn't matter what the balance is either. You can make those null if you wanted to. And then I will take int index is equal to linear search. Now, what, was, uh, what did it look like again? We take the array, the size of the array, the size of each thing in the array. So the array uh, counts the size of the, uh, the array the number of bytes each thing takes, so size of bank account, just like we did with quicksort up here. Then, uh, what, what else, what else was in, uh, what's the order? Uh, the key, and then the comparator that we need to use to search for it. So key, and the comparator that we want to use is this thing up here, all right? And then we'll print our results here, found account at index percent D and the line, oops, index. And let's see if it works. I should find it, as, since I sorted it, of course, oh, uh, uh, oh, I know what's wrong. So that's not a pointer. I need to make it into a pointer. There we go. And now my bank account is at index zero because I sorted it by name, right? And there we find it right there. What if I search for something else? What if I search for Grace Hopper? 
I should find that at index two, or index one, sorry. What if I search for something that doesn't exist, Grace Hooper, instead? I should find it at what index? Negative one, why? Because that's what happens with an unsuccessful search. Excellent, all right? That sounds so nice that I only have to, I only had to write one linear search method, one linear search function for the rest of my life. Why didn't somebody else already do it? They did. L search, L find, and L search. It's built into the standard search library. <laughs> Who would have thunk? What does it take? I'll ignore the uh, return value here for a second. It takes a key, so we put our key at the end, they put their key at the front. It takes a generic array. Uh, it takes the number of elements in that array, the size of each element in bytes of, in the array, and a comparator to determine is this the thing that you're looking for. Right? We just redesigned this. The only difference is that they actually return a pointer instead of an index value. Why? Well, here's five counts, that's not it, that's not it, that's it. So it returns the pointer pointing to that thing instead of the index two. Right? Uh, because you can always dereference it if you want to. That's the design. Now what's the difference between these two? Read the documentation. One of the, uh, I think, L search, it searches not it, not it, not it, not it, not it. Unsuccessful search, so what it does is it adds it to the end. Dangerous because it assumes that you have enough memory to do that. And then returns a pointer to it. Uh, L find does not. Not it, not it, not it, not it, not it. I'm not gonna add it, so what, uh, what, what can it return as a value to indicate an unsuccessful search since it's a, a pointer that now? No, exactly. Well, uh, linear search, if, if you're gonna sort it, then there's an even better one. Do you remember the better search method that we used, that we developed? So there's linear search, linear search, linear search. There's an even better one, binary search. It's not the same thing. Nope, oh, the, you quick sort it, and then you can use binary search, because binary, li linear search, it doesn't make any assumptions about the input. Binary search, it assumes that it's already sorted, so that it can look here in the middle and say, oh, okay, it's over here, or if it's over, over here. And then it can cut it down in half each and every single time. Binary search is even more standard. It's in the standard library. Why, it's, why we have a separate search library, don't ask me. Uh, but of course, it was put into the standard library originally, I'm sure, because it was so important. Right? You want to use binary, I mean, if you ever have a choice between binary search and linear search, even if you have to sort it, you generally do it, right? Because it's so much faster, it's exponentially faster. Same exact signature here. You take a generic key, a generic array, the number of elements in the array, the size of the array, a comparator to do its comparison, and a, uh, it returns a pointer to it. Of course, there's gonna be undefined behavior uh, uh, or uh, uh, weird behavior if uh, you sort it according to one order and then use a binary search according to a different order. And you'll witness that in your uh, lab tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so we were only searching for the things count by, by the number. Right. Uh, so if I wanted to search by a count number, what would I have to do? Or if you wanted to do it by a count number and name, like, uh, could you just add on, like, to the end of the or search by name? Uh, well, not, uh, yes, you would add to the, uh, the comparator. You'd have to make another comparator for exactly the criteria that you want. So CMP accounts by name and number is, might be a, an appropriate name. Right? Uh, if you wanted to uh, buy everything by the entire state, then you could do that as well. Right? Uh, but uh, that's less uh, useful for searching uh, because if you already have the exact, if you have one, two, three, and Chris, and Burke, and 42, 42, why are you searching for it? <laughs> Maybe you wanna know where it is, right? Where, where is that actually located? That, that would be a use case. But if you already have an object that's equal to the object that you're searching for, right? You, you've got your needle, you've got a needle in your haystack, but you've already got a needle in your hand, and if all you wanted is a needle, then you're done. Right? Okay, so. 
same idea applied to Java. All right. So do I have a uh, demo miscellaneous? Uh, what's in the default package here? No bank accounts here. So quick review. How do I create objects in Java? Just create a class, bank account. I will go ahead and add a, uh, there's no main here. There we go. Constructors from super, uh, and I'll go ahead and leave it like that. There we go. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to model what I did over here. I want a number, first name, last name, and balance. Okay. So I do that by number. I can't have char star. What is it instead? String. Generally, you want to make them private. So, oops, private. There we go. But that leads to a problem that I have to have a way to construct it. That's okay. Source, you can't see it because it's on the other screen. Source, generate constructor using the fields, all of them. Done. Also, I want a bunch of getters, maybe setters. Uh, generally, you don't want setters, though. Uh, getters and setters, all the getters, done, right? So that generated all these, get last name, get balance, get, uh, and of course, oops, how, how or why? Uh, go up to source, it's on the other screen, source, generate getters and setters, and then the dialogue pops up. Uh, it's, uh, well, it's in the menu. Uh, the, it's just in the menu on, at the top. And I didn't want them to split out anything. Make sure that you've collected all of your variables up here, otherwise that's bad style. There we go. Okay. Expand this out a bit here. Okay. So there's my constructor. You can construct a new one with those four elements. It follows good design here, this dot. Uh, the, all the getters, and here's my main. Right. I'm going to go ahead and steal the same data that I had over here. Uh, these four things. And I'm, Im I'm immediately going to just deal with lists. So list of bank account accounts right. is equal to new, or actually I'll leave it like this here. I'll leave it as null for a second. Right because I want to discuss this syntax now, okay? So import this. This is a parameterization. This is a list for bank accounts. Of course, if I put an integer in here, now that's a list for integers. If I try to add a bank account to it, that's going to be a compiler error because this is a list for integers. If it's a list for bank accounts and I try to put an integer into it, then it's gonna say, no, you can't do that because this is a list for bank accounts, okay? So list dot, or arrays dot as list, there we go. And this is just gonna be quick and dirty kind of uh, to, to get some test cases here. And I will edit all of these en masse. Uh, new bank account ah i screwed up the top i didn't mean to do that but whatever that's easier to fix than going back now uh, and bank account fix that there we go so new bank account new bank account and then find and replace with that in the selection Replace all, closed. And then the last one has to be dealt with separately. Okay. Refor uh, reformat it. And uh, I don't like that formatting, but whatever. All right, so undo that. That's at least a little bit better. Now I've got a list of bank accounts. How did I do that so quickly? Well, I used convenience methods, arrays.asList. I can give it a variadic, a variable number of arguments. Uh, I use the block selection op, uh, edit, editing so that I could edit multiple things as a block at one time and type, uh, type it uh, once instead of five times, et cetera. Right? Learning tricks like that will really speed things up. How did you do undo? Because I've been trying to... Uh, control Z. 
like voila, control Z. All, uh, any undo and, and most uh, applications will be control Z. Uh, redo is control Y. Uh, and yeah, it'll just back up whatever edit you had. Okay, so I've got my bank accounts here. System. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and print them out one to a line. Um, uh, for bank account A in accounts system dot out print ln a now this is going to look ugly why review why is it why is it printing out bank account and then this nonsensical number right here it, it's a memory address of the java virtual machine that's the default behavior if you don't like that default behavior go up to source generate to string and it'll generate, and that's not great, but at least it'll print out the entire state of the object. And it looks something like this now. And if you want to pretty that up, go ahead. I'm going to leave it as is now, for now, because I'm just demonstrating something else, okay? What I want to do is I want to sort these things. Collections.sort is how we sort, the, oops, sort accounts. That's what I showed you last week when we wanted to sort an array or uh, sort a list of integers. This is no longer a list of integers. This is a list of bank accounts. It's not going to work because it doesn't know, well, here's two bank accounts. How, how does it go? Does it go like this, this, or this? Right? It knew how to do those with integers because it was built into the, uh, the language that integers go in ascending order. Right? If you want a descending order, then you needed to make your own comparator. Comparator. Same exact concept here. This is a comparator class. It's actually an interface. What is this a comparator for? That's no longer a comparator for integers. Now it's a comparator for bank accounts. Right? And that's what I want to use in collections.sort. No. We're not done yet because we haven't you know, actually made this yet thing yet. Go ahead. They are in a list called accounts. Collections is a uh, is is even more general. It's it's this uh, um, like sets, maps, uh, lists. They're all collections. This is just a class. Just this kind of like math dot square root, right? This is just a class in which this sort method is stored, just like square root. It only lists because sets are inherently unordered. There is no first element. There is no second element. Right? Maps are unordered. There is no first element. There is no second element. Only lists are ordered and have a first element, second element, third element, etc. Right. Only lists. Yep, you can only sort lists. So what I need to do is I need to create this comparator. And this is syntax that uh, might be a little bit new. Uh, it is what's called an anonymous uh, in, uh, inter, uh, inner class. It's an anonymous inner, uh, inner class. Uh, that I could put this into another class with an actual name, my awesome bank account comparator that uh, compares things by name, right? I could do something like that if you really wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. Why? Well, it has one use, right? Just create it and then be done with it. It doesn't have a name. It's anonymous, right? So any comparator will have simply one method. Compare, it returns an integer, and it takes two bank accounts. And it returns something negative, something positive, or zero, depending on the relative ordering of them. It's even easier here because, it, because of this parameterization, we no longer have the issue of void, right? It's not a generic void pointer because there are no pointers anymore. We know that it's a bank account because we parameterized it like that. If it was for integer, well, now, well, no, these aren't bank accounts. These are integers now because you said that it was an integer, so compiler error, right? They're definitely bank accounts, though, and we can start comparing them. Int result is equal to 01 dot last name dot compare to 02 dot last name. Why does that work? 
because strings are comparable. That returns something zero, or there's something to return something negative, something positive, or zero, depending on the relative ordering of these two strings, which we can capture as a result. If that's zero, then we break ties by looking at the first account's first name and compare that to the second account's first name and return result. Oh no, last name and first name were our strings. Right? Remember? First name, last name. We made them as strings. Right? Oh, the built in types, integers, big I integers, big D doubles, and strings, they all have built in ordering. It's called lexicographic or natural ordering. Right? Numbers in ascending order, uh, letters and uh, strings according to lexicographic order. Nope. Well, I am. I'm comparing them here, but how are you comparing them? I'm comparing them last name, first name. And when I do that, here's the first, uh, now I get, here's the, uh, here's the after it's been sorted. Uh, Burke, Hopper, Smith, Smith, Turing, Joe Smith, and Zelda Smith are in order. Same exact thing as before. Whatever, uh, whatever logic you're going to do, you, you put into here. Uh, another way that you could have done this is collect, uh, collections.sort. I no, stop auto completing for that counts. And then uh, what would it be? Bank account number, get number. Or what is it? Get number? Yeah, it's get number. Oh, you can't do it that way? Uh, maybe I don't have, uh, which version of Java is this configured for? Uh, Java, not 12. It should, it should work. Uh, I forget how to do it, but you can do something like this instead, uh, where you say, uh, uh, number that way. Okay. I forget how to do it, but there's an easier way to do it. I'll review that next time after I've looked at this, re-looked at the syntax. Uh, but there's an even easier way of doing it. Right. All right, so that works. In the last 10 minutes here, let's do the same thing that we did over here in C of creating one linear search algorithm to rule them all, but we'll do it in Java over here instead. Right. And I'll just do it in the same class for demonstration purposes, uh, but I'll do it at the end here. So public, static, int because we're going to return an index, uh, linear search. And what do I take now? Do I take a, a list of integers? Do I take a list of doubles? Do I take a list of bank accounts? No, I take a list of things, T, uh, items. And I don't need to take the size. I don't need to take anything else except for what? I need a comparator for it. Not a comparator for bank accounts though a comparator for elements of type t. t here is a, a meta variable. So if I have int, int x, its type is fixed, it's an integer, but its value is not fixed. I can set it equal to 42, I can reset it equal to 21, I can reset it equal to zero, right? But a declaration like this, both of them are variables. Its value is variable, but also its type is variable. It's not a necessarily an integer. It's not necessarily a double. It's not necessarily a bank account. It's anything that you want it to be, right? You parameterize it like this and say that, uh, come on. Uh, oh, I need to give this a name, CMP. There we go, there. So what I've done is I've made this into a generic method. This is a method that operates on elements of type T, meaning that it takes a list of elements of type T and it takes a comparator for elements of type T. Now, when you actually call this, that means that you have to give it a list of integers and a comparator for integers, 
or you can give it a list for uh, bank accounts and a comparator for bank accounts. Right? The key is that whatever your list is, elements of type T, it has to match the comparator and be the same type. It doesn't care what they are. Right? It only cares that they're the same type. They could both be integers, they could both be doubles. It doesn't matter. Why? Because what does our linear search look like? For int i equals zero, i is less than items.size, i plus plus. Oops. Similar to the other uh, linear search in C that we just wrote, if uh, items.get i is, e oh, I, I also needed a key, by the way, you know, the thing that I'm searching for. And it has to be the same type as well, right? If the comparator, cmp.compare to, if I compare the ith element and the key and the comparator returns zero, then that's the thing that I'm looking for. Right? Now it's still, uh, no, if you have an unsuccessful search, of course, return negative one. Right? There, I've written one linear search method for the rest of my life. I don't have to ever have to worry about this, pro uh, this problem again. Right? And again, how does it work? I parameterize it. I say that this is a method that operates on elements of type T. What is T? T is just a placeholder. Why do, we, why do we call it T? It's shorthand for type. It could be doubles, it could be integers, it could be bank accounts, right? The only condition is that whatever list you give me has to have the same type as the comparator that you give me and the key that you give me, right? I hand off all the heavy lifting to the actual comparator that has been parameterized and it knows that it's bank accounts. It knows that it's integers, it knows that it's doubles. Linear search down here doesn't have to know that stuff. It just needs to know how to walk through the elements in the array or in the list, call the comparator to see if, are they equal, in which case that's the thing that, you, uh, that you're looking for, and then return. So how does this work up here? Int index is equal to linear search. I'll search the bank accounts, accounts, uh, and the same comparator, uh, C, and why are you complaining still? Oh, you're complaining because of down here. Uh, and finally the key, and I don't have a key yet, so uh, bank account key is equal to new bank account of, uh, it doesn't matter, zero, Chris, Burke, and then <laughs> nothing in my bank account. <laughs> All right, and then system.out.println found found it at index plus index. Right. And I don't know what the sorting order was, but we found it at index zero, because we sorted it by na name, last name, first name. If it were Grace Hopper, where was she? At index one, because right, she came second. And if it's somebody that does not exist, Grace Hooper, then of course negative one, didn't find it. That seems so convenient that again, repeating myself, uh, it's probably built into the library. Uh, what is my list here? Accounts dot index of key. Right. It's not called linear search, uh, unfortunately, but you can get the same idea here. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's similar, but uh, uh, index of and then comparator. Nope. Uh, so that's for strict equality. Uh, erase that. Let's back up here. Uh, let's look at uh, collections dot, oh, dot binaries. Mm -hmm. Bin binary search. What does that look like? It takes a list and a key and a comparator accounts. So why didn't you Oh, because you might not necessarily have a unordered array. You have to sort it, and then you can use binary search. 
Uh, if you, uh, there, there is a trade-off there, right? Uh, that if you've got a billion elements and you're only ever going to do one search, just find the thing that you're looking for and you're done. Then you have an argument for maybe just linear search. Go through it once and you're done. But if you're gonna perform search after search after search, even just like two or three searches, then it's probably worth it to go ahead and sort it and then use binary search because it's going to be so much faster. But if you're only ever gonna do one, you might have an argument for just do a linear search, don't worry about sorting it. Sorting is an investment, right? That then pays you dividends later on as searches are exponentially faster. Uh, index is equal to. Well, you should. How do you do them? Well, you just call that function. Oh, You're done. Okay. But like, uh, How to implement it? What we did in C, uh, like, uh, like, 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 you, you can write a generic, just make it generic. Instead of integers, you have T. And then you hand off the heavy lifting to the comparator, just like we did with this linear search right here. Right? Uh, same, same idea, same principle. Sort, well, yeah, you'd have to use sort uh, or collections.sort like I did right here. At, at the end of the day, you don't roll your own. You don't write your own sorting algorithms. You don't write your own searching algorithms, unless there is a very good reason to do so. You, you just need to write a comparator, exactly. And then call the appropriate methods. All right?